Now I thought I'd begin with a poem for Bill here. Um, it was inspired by a conversation that uh, I had with Bill a little while ago about one of my chainsaw projects. <laughs> I got a little nervous when Bill wrote about the, uh, the chainsaw project. I think when my colleagues hear that I'm roaming around with a chainsaw, they think I'm probably planning the William and Mary chainsaw massacre. <laughs> and also, I have a friend who's a neighbor who works for an organ donor service in Richmond. <laughs> and whenever she sees me with my chainsaw, she reminds me that a lot of the organs that are donated to her service come from victims of chainsaw accidents. <laughs> so, but anyways, so Bill inspired this poem. And uh, it's called After Irene. You probably remember the hurricane. It was about six years ago. And yeah, mo most of this is uh, based on fact. Uh, we lost power for maybe eight days or so because we had a big tree that Anyways, after I read. For days without power, we lit candles, grilled fish sticks in the fireplace, tried to sleep in unair conditioned air. On the fourth dark night, the house shook. Stumbling outside in flip flops, we pointed flashlights at our big oak, pitched into ravine mud, beer cans and styrofoam boxes bobbing around it. Cracks split like lightning in concrete beneath our porch. By the smashed culvert next morning, my son said, let the tree harden to coal. For years, gutter runoff rotted its branches. Yellow jackets and carpenter ants colonized its hollows. When a public works official ordered me to remove it, I chainsawed the trunk from pithy crown to root ball felt the heartwood toughen, red chips hit my face. Lying above andirons and clumped newspaper one cold New Year's Eve, the split logs never burned. Like salamanders and old legends, they just gave up their skins, hissing and darkening as I pumped the bellows and the headlines broke into flames around them. 